became Manoj Krishna. I used to be a spine surgeon. I left that career uh, about seven years ago now. Um, wrote a book on understanding ourselves, worked in education for three and a half years, and then uh, started this human wisdom project. And our goal is to try and make the world a better place at scale and try and address some of the problems humanity faces, which at the moment don't seem to have an easy solution. The core ideas that we're working with are really simple. See, all of us on this call couldn't be more different, different countries, skin colors, backgrounds. We're physically different, but the big difference between us all is the content of our memory. And because that's all we see, we think that's all there is. So we're all unique, see. But hidden from our awareness, just like computers have the same operating system, which the user doesn't see, our minds function in similar ways, and we're not aware of it. So for example, you might be afraid of spiders, I'm afraid of the dark, but the nature of fear in both of us, all of us is the same. You're conditioned to call yourself Indian, I'm conditioned to call myself Pakistani, we grow up hating each other, but the process of conditioning is the same in the sense we're both unaware that we've been conditioned, and yet we are attached to our conditioning influences, whatever it might be, you know, religious, national, opinions, beliefs. And the mind is the same whether you're five or 55, it makes no difference. But a deeper understanding of this way our mind functions and of ourselves brings illumination and awakens our own inner intelligence and leads to wisdom. And this wisdom can be completely transformative. So I'll give you a simple example. Say I'm born on this side of the street in Belfast, I'm Catholic, the other side I'm Protestant. We grow up hating each other, we never ask why. If we ask why, we'd uncover this hidden process of conditioning operating in both of us, which has occurred without our awareness or our consent. And we'd say, why do I hate someone I've never met? So the whole project's about asking questions. It's inquiry-based. So if I ask, myself those questions, then something shifts in me. If someone asks me those questions, I'll put my hands up and, you know, there's a barrier. So if I ask myself, why do I hate this person? Of course, there's no real answer. And so it just drops away. So the simple thing, and this is what really got me involved in this project. I've been interested in this space for a long time, but a few years ago, I was driving home from work and there was a hospital in the Middle East got bombed. These children were screaming. It was a children's hospital in Aleppo. And I really felt that we human beings need to do better. So that's when I transitioned out of medicine and started this project. You know, if you look around the world, every problem for which we human beings don't have an easy solution begins in our thinking, whether it's stress and anxiety, relationship breakdown, addiction, violence, climate change, intolerance, it goes on and on, right? So if we're gonna address these problems, we need to go deeper into the deeper layers of our thinking to try and understand what's going on there. And, and that then allows us to live a completely different way. But the other thing this approach does is it awakens compassion. Because if I see that you and I are the same human being. So I'll tell you a story. I went to um, talk to some teachers in Newcastle here with about 120 teachers. And at the end, a lady came up and was, came up to me and was crying. So I immediately started apologizing. I said, I'm really sorry if I've upset you in some way. And she said, no, no, no. Uh, but what you said has helped me to forgive my parents for the first time. So, I, so then she explained that she had a boyfriend who had a different skin color to her, you know, and her parents refused to accept him. So it caused 20 years of heartache. The parents had not seen the grandchildren and all this, you know, ill feeling on all sides. But she said, now I've suddenly understood that they can't help their behavior because it comes from their unconscious conditioning influences, you know, after the war. And 
they're not even aware that they've been conditioned in that way. But she said, I am the same. Because <laughs> I'm also not aware I've been conditioned. And my opinions and my prejudices also come from my conditioning, which I'm not aware of. And even though I don't agree with what they've done, I can forgive them because I have compassion. I understand what's happened. See? So this approach awakens compassion too. And what we're trying to do is um, scale it all around the world. So we built an app, which I'm going to show you in a second. We're going to, right now, the adult program is more or less ready. We'll be ready to launch in a couple of months. But the children's program and the teenage program, and one for parents, is in development and will follow in a year or so. But this approach brings human beings together. And you see, the other thing is, this is not Manoj's idea. It's like saying, all of us in this call, we're the same human being looking at the same mind we all share, which is like looking at the moon together. I might have looked at it for a while and might be able to say a couple of things, but you can then look and point something out to me and we can learn together. So this project is one of co-creation. That's the way I see it. The other day, a 15-year-old girl said something to me. And I said, wow, that's really, I hadn't thought of that. And so it went in the program. Do you see what I mean? And what she said to me was, we were exploring this teenage program. So if you have any teenagers in your network, I'd love to hear from them. Because what we're trying to do is take the adult program, modify it so that it's teenage friendly. So there was a screen saying, how does a mind react when it's angry? And she said, Manoj, you missed something out. I said, what's that? She said, we react sometimes with sarcasm. I said, yes, you're right. And so, you know, it's going to go in the program. So I see this is our journey, that all of us together, as we develop this project, if we have insights we can share, they go into the program. And we can then share them as we travel in the world. So as part of this, the reason you're all, are all here as coaches is that we're developing a wisdom coaching program. So through the program, our users can reach out to a coach uh, from the app itself and speak to them. Um, so these are all coaches who are existing therapists or coaches. They go through a short training program uh, with us just to ex explain. So we're all on the same page about inquiry and what this whole project's about. And... Um, then our coaches also become ambassadors for human wisdom in the world. So we want, so there are many different ways in which um, our coaches can uh, be involved in the project. And maybe I'll explain that after I've quickly just talked you through um, the app and shown it to you so you understand what we're doing. I'll send you all a link to this. Um, Okay, so that's the human wisdom app. It scrolls up and down and um, right to left. It's a bit like a Netflix style dashboard. At the top, it's just a introduction to wisdom. And what we want to say is that this inner intelligence or wisdom can help you be successful on the inside as well as in the world. Right now, every parent and every child wants to be successful, but that's only in the world outside. And the way the mind functions is we think, what can I do in the world out there to make me feel good in here? But this isn't a new way of feeling good in here and it's not dependent on what's happening in the world out there. So how much money you have and your status and position and all of those things don't really matter. <clears throat> we have some features for our users. So there's a wisdom story section and we have about a, a hundred stories here from writers around the world. And so um, people learn through storytelling. So this was a story about 
these are true stories, the names have not changed, about a boy whose parents were alcoholic and how he grew up with them. And so we have a little blurb about uh, alcoholism and so on. And then the modules that connect with this and how they could help you. So whether it's fear and anxiety, conditioning, addiction, breathing, etc. So uh, the user can go straight to the modules that are relevant to that story. There's an online journal. So we're going to ask people four questions, three or four questions every day. What made you happy? What are you grateful for? What did you learn about yourself? What made you, what did you do that was kind today? And then through the modules, as you go through, we ask you questions and your answers come up in your own journal. This is of course, uh, private to you. That's the coaching program we're developing. Um, there'll be an online forum and a wisdom cafe where people can drop in for a chat and they will be moderated by our coaches. The wisdom survey is just tracks your progress through the project and we'll have podcasts too. The introduction explains um, that bit's gonna be free. The rest of the program is on a subscription, but this one is free. So let's explore, this is just tells you how the program works. So from every screen, you can share it uh, with others. You can write your own note um, or you can bookmark it uh, to look at later. And um, this is one of the things that drives me too, because not only does this wisdom help the individual, but it will also help us collectively as a humanity, as Sir David Attenborough said the other day, to continue where human beings need more than intelligence, we require wisdom. Because if you think about it, climate change is caused by human behavior. Human behavior is caused by human thinking. So if we're going to fix climate change, we've got to fix human thinking and nobody's talking about that but wisdom allows us collectively to do that um, as as a group okay so these are the different ways in which wisdom i mean this is just some of the ways there may be others too but it can help us in our relationships with stress and addiction and anxiety um, help us be less violent communicate better uh, avoid disappointment because our expectations come from inside us without our awareness. Again, we don't know where they turn up, how they turn up. We've talked about living with compassion, which is something the world really desperately needs right now. You know, your right hand will never go to war with your left hand because you realize they're the same, they're part of you. So similarly, if others are behaving in ways you don't like, compassion can help you address that in a much more intelligent way that allows us to accept ourselves as we are this is the one thing that eludes all human beings and Sunday you might relate with this having been in a corporate career um, all your life that no matter how wealthy and well off you become in life this peace inner peace eludes us whereas wisdom allows you to discover that irrespective of what's happening in the world and lastly it helps you live with emotional intelligence. But how do we get to this wisdom? What do we need to do? This section is just about their short 10 minute videos which help people who are acutely distressed. So for example, if you look at the anger one, uh, it's going to have 16 ways you can meet anger with intelligence right now. Because when you're Hi. angry, Welcome to this short fire, film exploring 16 it. different ways and we so can respond this is a very to anger quick with intelligence. Reminder. It's a normal human emotion and feels like a fire in our brains. Um, so the full program below that has got five sections. We call them the five circles of wisdom. It's just a way of describing the, the journey for the user. Everything here is really simple. Ten-year-old child will understand. And they do. <laughs> and I can share some of my conversations with ten-year-olds. But we begin with nature because nature is our biggest teacher um, and we explore different ways in which we can be with nature. Right now, we kind of walk through it or we think our way through it, talk our way through it, but we actually don't connect. And this connecting can be very nurturing and uh, we explore that in detail. Then there are other ways in which um, the mind can become quiet and calm and they're well known. So they're all here. 
But this section, the next two sections here are quite unique. So the first asks, how can we learn to look at ourselves? See that for the astronomer, it's the quality of the telescope that determines what's seen in the heavens. For human beings, it's just our intelligence. So here we explore the art of inquiry, how to understand yourself. So we talk about insight, awareness, lack of judgment, how to ask questions, look without language, and so on. And then this is how the mind works, is the human mind, which is hidden from our awareness. It's our operating system. It's uh, at the heart of everything we do, but we're not aware of it. So we're all conditioned, as I said. Our minds compare all the time, our minds are reactive. We have images of ourselves as good surgeons or good cooks or good dancers or whatever. We operate from self-interest, but often we're not aware of it. It's hidden from our own understanding. We have these strong attachments to identities and they were responsible for all the wars in the world. You know, in the last century, we human beings killed 200 million of our own. No other species on the planet does that. And no other species on the planet destroys its own beehive. And yet we know we're doing that and are unable to stop ourselves. How can we call ourselves intelligent? And this intelligence is awakened through this wisdom. We all have emotional needs that affect our relationships. And then we talk about our inner boredom, which drives our need for pleasure and the nature of the eye. Then we explore all our emotions. And then we take this understanding and apply it to living with wisdom. So there are 16 modules now. We're probably going to add one more on sleep. We explore, um, say, for example, this is the stress module. You can see it's one of our larger modules. Um, and then say, how do you respond to stress with wisdom? And at the end, there are 14 ways that we, we suggest that that's possible. So stress, anxiety, relationships, uh, love, criticism, self-esteem, how to live with peace and deal with death. Uh, happiness, communication, where our opinions and beliefs come from. How to be successful on the inside. How to meet failure on the outside. How to avoid and overcome addiction. Have a healthy relationship with food and money. And then bring this wisdom to work and through and into leadership. A global problem is just an individual problem multiplied 8 billion times. So we can use this understanding at scale to tackle racism and climate change and global health challenges and end conflict and transform education. So it's a really comprehensive program. It's always going to be evolving and developing. And there'll be a similar program for teenagers, for children, and for parents. Um, So what we're looking for is, or hoping, is that we can all collectively come together to um, try and make the world a better place, to transform individual lives, reduce suffering in the world, um, and at the same time, be able to make a living through working for human wisdom. And there are four ways, as I said, that we can do that. One is that, uh, of course, the app will be given to all our coaches for free. It's a weekend training program. So in Australia, we've got 11th, 12th September and 18th, 19th September. They're over two weekends, but it's going to be, um, I think, half a day. I think 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. Melbourne time over um, two weekends. The training is free. At the end, you'll become a certified wisdom coach, become an ambassador for human wisdom. So you'll get clients from the from the app. Initially, of course, it will be slow. If you recommend the app to a user, you'll get 10% of that subscription, whatever we earn. If you introduce it to an organization, you'll get 10% of that revenue on a recurring basis. And that could then become quite, uh, allow you to have a good income uh, so you can continue working for this project. Um, and if you introduce others who then go on to, um, you know, help sell the app, then you'll get a share of that revenue. And I'll send you all the, all the details. On the platform as a coach, you can set your own fees. 
uh, we'll take 25% of that, you'll get 75%. Um, and as I said, a lot of coaches sometimes use the app alongside their coaching. So say they'll say, right, read the anger module this week, we'll explore it together next week when we meet or re relationship module or whatever the challenge might be, or do a breathing exercise with the client before you begin um, you know, your session. And all, all, of it's, um, all of it's there. But I can imagine that if you introduce it to a large organization, say with 30,000 employees, they might want you to come and support that, develop the establishment of the project in the organization. So uh, you could have offline classes or workshops in the organization. But in time, we'd like it to be something that people value so much that organizations will say, we are a human wisdom organization, or we ascribe to those values of compassion and you know, compassionate leadership and so on. So it can also become something that attracts talent into organizations and allows them to retain talent too, because they're part of something that's bigger than just that organization and they're trying to help make the world a better place. So I think I've covered most things, Natasha, but I'll open it up to comments and discussions now. Um, do you want to start first? Do you have any questions at all? I was going to mention, sorry, sorry about the background noise, was going to mention if you were going to add the sleep module. So you've already answered um, that question because I think that would be really um, a good thing to add. And once again, aren't you guys like super excited? <laughs> And it's very exciting. It's very, very exciting. And just if we could get it into schools, you know, starting starting the kids the kids off like the next generation, um, that I think that would go a long way to a better future. But it's also exciting. I never even thought about you said like having organisations that are, um, yeah, human wisdom organisation. That would be amazing. If there were, yes, more, more organisations out there that um, had those types of, um, what's the word? What's the word I'm looking for? That outlook, yeah. Just that, yeah. that, that, that ethos or... The ethos, yes. Work. Yeah. I, th I think, I personally think that um, poor managers and, you know, really are the bane of all organisations, whether it's in government or private sector. And our pitch to organizations is to say that human wisdom can help with employee well-being, employee retention and reduce sick days and so on. But leadership development, every leadership quality comes from wisdom, doesn't come from education. You know, whether it's integrity or communication skills or relationship building. And we'll say it's going to improve productivity because this can... Um, you know, there's so much interpersonal friction right now inside organizations, my department versus your department and so on. Mm -hmm. And all that tribalism can fall away if we, um, if people in organizations live this wisdom. So there's a lot of opportunity for organizations, for the world of education, governments, and especially at scale, you know, mm -hmm. like the prison service, for example, you know, we could say like, Okay, mm -hmm. this could be really useful to help reduce reoffending. Because if you're not aware of your conditioning, so if I ask a question like, do you want your unconscious conditioning to run your life? Or do you want your intelligence to run your life? Most people say, I want my intelligence to do that. Then you've got to understand your conditioning, because right now your conditioning is driving your life. It's taking you where it wants to go rather than where you want to go, and so on. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Jim? Well, I'm doing um, a Master's of Leadership at the moment, and what you've been saying there is coming through in the interviews that I'm carrying out with um, the individuals who are people who've been in um, very high level um, cross-section of different people, but some of them have been, one just got an Order of Australia um, last year. So what's coming out is this strong emphasis on empathy and compassion. They're all very successful leaders and what they have highlighted is the need for empathy and compassion in leadership. So this would be ideal in organisations as far as I can see. 
And what the what the app does, or what the project's trying to do, is show people the how. Yeah. You see, the more you understand yourself, the more you can understand others. You might say, I want to be empathetic and compassionate. And you might succeed for 10 minutes, but the minute your whole brain takes over, which is most of the time, then that's it, it stops right there. So a deeper understanding and awareness allows us to make do this consistently and shows mm. people, shows us how we can be empathetic and how we can live with compassion and so on. Yes, definitely. Well, two of the um, key components of what I'm doing in this study is social evaluative threat and how we are intimidated by what other people have or how other people look at us and how we don't feel we measure up to them. And the other thing is cognitive dissonance, where we have to justify that we are right um, in order to feel that self-worth. So, yes, yes this, would, this would solve all those problems. Yes, it would, wouldn't it? Let me share with you, uh, I was talking to some children in a secondary school. They were mixed ages, 10 to 15. And we're exploring the unconscious process of comparison in our thinking. It's automatic, unconscious, I'm not even aware of it. You know, you're telling me about your amazing holiday. The first thing I'm feeling is jealous. I can't even help myself. You know, I want to not feel jealous, but I don't know how to, you see what I mean? And we're the best of friends. And for that moment, I don't like you anymore because you're make, I think you're making me feel bad. Anyway, we're exploring all this. So I asked the children, I said, if we could use our intelligence so that our minds didn't automatically compare ourselves with others all the time. And we just did that when we needed to for our own benefit. How would our lives change? And this girl at the back, and she said, I would be free. Mm, definitely. See, these are children, you see, Jane. Mm. So they really have this intuitive understanding. And if we could bring this into education, in a oh. generation, I think we could make a difference to the future of humanity, you know, in that sense. Um, Definitely. Um, Sandeep, what do you think? This is your first time to all this stuff, so. Um, I think I resonate very deeply with whatever you said. Um, all the things you mentioned more or less are things that I have been going through in my head and wondering how and what to do because there's a time I want to focus on children because I said, well, they are the future and all our beliefs and everything tend to start from that young age. So why not tackle this issue at that age, right? And, and I clearly know that education is one aspect, but it doesn't touch any of this, right? So when you have a program that's for all age groups, it just looks fantastic. And, and you have covered quite a lot and I'm sure there'll be more areas and more modules that will keep getting added on and you know, I can see that there's a lot of potential for something like this. I do have a question though, as to what is the source, the underpinning or, or the basis of the content of the program? Okay. So, you see, everyone wants to know, where does it come from? Who invented it? <laughs> to see what I mean. But my question to you is, who invented the moon? In the sense that it's been there, it's part of us, do you see what I mean? So for millennia, human beings have looked at and explored and tried to uncover and understand this mind that we, we all share. And the Many, many people have done that. So it's not one person. But here's the key thing. If I say this is a pen, it's only a pen if you see it clearly yourself as well. So I'm not asking you to think of or believe anything. See, it only becomes important where the, it's come from. If I say, I tell you to imagine a pen, <laughs> then you have to believe me. You see what I mean? But if I say this is a pen, and you say, yeah, Manoj, it's a pen, then that's, oh, I didn't see it, but now I see it, it's a pen. That, that's what we're all about, you see, Sandeep, that's the key thing. Okay. So okay. Uh, that's, that's one thing. Um, 
But in the modern era, I'd say people like Krishnamurti, uh, Ramana Maharishi, the Zen Buddhists, the Sufi saints, um, bits from the Buddha. So people will look at it and say, ah, there's a bit of something from everywhere. Um, Most definitely. But the, here's the big difference. All the religions of the world have said, believe what we're trying to tell you. Believe in us and follow these rules that we lay down and your life will be great. And that model hasn't worked. What we're saying, here's a glass of water. And here are a thousand books that tell you what water tastes like. What do you want to do? You could read those thousand books. You can become an expert. You can become a PhD. You could become the world leader, but you still won't know what water tastes like. Mm. Why don't you just drink it and find out? And that's what we're trying to do, Sandeep. We're trying to embody this wisdom, help people actually live with this thing, not just as another information exchange. It's pointless. It makes no difference, right? When you live with this wisdom, Mm. Your life flowers in goodness, compassion, peace. So, but it only comes if you take this journey inside yourself. Mm. Yeah. Looking. So he, we, here's a simple way to say it. If I was talking to somebody, I'd say, here's an invitation for you to learn about yourself. Not according to me, but according to yourself. Here's some tools to help you. Mm. This Self-understanding is going to awaken your own intelligence, lead to wisdom, which is going to change your own life. Not according to me, you see what I mean? So you are going to become your own teacher, but I'm going to walk with you as you travel, you know, just as a tour guide. That's the best way to put it, you know? Mm-hmm. So if I'm walking back, going through um, Sydney and I say, oh, that's the Sydney Opera House. And somebody will say, and I can tell you a little bit about it. But it's only true if you see it clearly yourself. Do you see what I mean? No, so that, oh yeah. that, do you understand now? It's really yeah. simple that way. Um, uh, I do have a follow-up question. Um, like you're based in the UK and you've obviously uh, provided this program in several countries. Um, what is the legal situation as regards this product? Uh, is there anything to be considered from a legality point of view? Okay. So, the, of course, there's a, there are two aspects to it. One is there's a disclaimer as users first sign up. Right. And it's, it's basically saying um, this is not a psychotherapeutic platform. Right. right. It's not right. meant to treat mental illness. Right. The diagnosed mental illness. Though it might help, but it's not meant as a treatment. Yeah. Number yeah. one. Yeah. Our coaches... Again, we're going to, then there'll be another disclaimer before people join with, you know, use our coaches. And we're going to say, we'll have some insurance, but the insurance will cover the content of the program. uh, Coaches will carry their current, whatever insurance they have. Um, And again, we'll make it clear that we're not about treating psychotherapeutic illness. Right. Right. It's primarily a life coaching Okay. Though there are therapists on our program, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And yeah. of course, the boundaries are not always going to be exact. So yeah. we will have internal mechanisms where you can refer a client to somebody in the system. We right. have, we're going to have coaches in America, England, Australia, and India right. to start with. So that'll mm-hmm. be our cohort. So mm-hmm. we'll gradually get that community together working as one, mm-hmm. you see. Mm-hmm. And but my big vision is that everyone becomes then an ambassador for what we're trying to do in the world. Mm-hmm. In your area, you can start talking to networks, organizations, and gradually yeah. it'll become something that people aspire to. And yeah. I want young people to think, ah, I want to do the human wisdom program and get that certificate of completion because it's going to help me be a better human being, but also might help me in my career. Mm-hmm. You know, because organizations are looking for emotional mm. intelligence, you know, mm. communication skills and all of that stuff. Absolutely. No, wonderful. Uh, so, so that's, um, 
Yeah, and it's not about promoting any individual. See, so we're not about another Deepak Chopra or an Oprah Winfrey or another mm. guru business. No, no. Mm. Our aim is to be uh, anonymous in that sense, <laughs> agnostic of a person. Mm. This wisdom is collectively belongs to all human beings, all of humanity, in a sense. Mm. Do you see what I mean? Mm. Um, and uh, of course, it may not help some people. Some people want to follow somebody. They want a leader to tell them what to do with all of that. Um, but we'll be disappointing them because we, we're not about that at all. We're going to say, you have to be a light into your own life. You know, you have to, um, yeah. Yeah, very good. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Sandeep. Um, I have a good question. Lisa, hello. You've been listening very patiently. Sorry, I didn't introduce you. Uh, do you want to say something a little bit about yourself before you tell me what you think? Yeah, sure. Sorry for uh, drawing late as well as I didn't turn on my camera because I jumped from another meeting <laughs> uh, to join this one. I'm Lisa, I based in Hong Kong and I'm from mainland China. So I speak Mandarin, Cantonese and English majorly. I am certified uh, ACC coach, but actually that is my hobby or my passion. I got a full-time job. <laughs> so, and then I was really um, happy to be referred by my coach, Suresh, to, to join and learn a bit more about the program. I felt I had kind of lots of connection with what you described, including like compassionate. I actually, being compassionate, I, I just accomplished a three months program about compassionate living uh meditation program and then also like uh one of my best friends actually is from pakistan <laughs> and also like um asking question is definitely related to coaching etc and then when i watch your video i think conditioning um identify the conditioning part or the background part is really important consider what we experience here in hong kong that yeah, because it, it is a hub that different culture have different background, people have different ideas. But um, put all that aside, I actually I'm curious about uh, the language capability of the platform because you mentioned you want to cover, you, you want to benefit the whole world. So how about the language capability as well as the coverage or the resources? about your, your network at this moment, whether that could sufficiently cover location like China, language like English or uh, like uh, Mandarin and Cantonese. Okay, so Lisa, we are babies. We are just starting. We haven't even yet started crawling. <laughs> we're just sitting up, think of it that way. <laughs> but we're going to be running one day. Think of it that way, okay. So we've got all those things to do. So we want to create with, so here's the vision. We want to create a human wisdom foundation, which will be nonprofit. This project is commercial, of course, because then it attracts investment and then we can grow and, and all that. But from the profits we make, we'll create a human wisdom foundation. We'll translate this into all the languages in the world. We'll give it for free to the poor who can't afford it. Because why should they be deprived of this? You know, it's not just for the leadership and the executives that, you know, where the money is, right? Where do all the coaches work? Only at the top with all the people who have money. What about everybody else? We want to create teacher training academies so that we can train teachers to bring this wisdom and this teaching into schools and so on. So absolutely, it will be translated into all these languages. And if you partner with us and journey with us, we can work that up. We can figure out how best we can do that. You know. Um, so you're absolutely right that we're starting in English. Our coaches are going to be from different cultures and different languages. So that could be one way users can uh, talk in their language, if you like, to the coaches. But we want to get it translated as well. That will be part of the down the line. But there is so much we can do with this because all the global problems can be addressed in a different way using this approach. See, climate change is about consumption. 
and the need for consumption comes from our inner emptiness. So, you know, I buy something, it makes me feel good inside. I feel good for a day, but then tomorrow I feel empty again. I need to buy something more. That's how the world is moving. But if you live with a sense of peace, then your needs find their own balance in life. And so this could help address so many issues the world faces right now for which it's searching for solutions. So the, I'm not saying it's the only answer, but it could be part of you know, the solution. Um, Elwin, what did you make of all that? What do you think? Oh, muted. <laughs> He's still muted. He's there still we muted. Are. I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to say that um, Natasha brought me into this and I hadn't really done much homework on it at all, but I trust her and everything that she uh, wants to uh, introduce me to. And I have to say I'm absolutely amazed at this. It's the most... Mm. opportunist time in history for something Absolutely. like this to come out yep. with the depression and the oppression of the world today for you to give the people something to lift them up to a higher sense of consciousness it's i'm just flabbergasted yeah i told you i was excited about this <laughs> it's pretty exciting <laughs> yeah. so that's that's my take on it and I'm very excited about it. Yeah. You know, the beauty of this is we can do it peacefully with compassion and mm. kindness, you know. We'd go to someone who's behaving really badly, say someone who's very racist in their attitudes and behavior, we can say, hang on, why are you doing that? <laughs> you are you don't sure have you any don't peace. want to run for prime minister or president? <laughs> no, no, no. Of which country? Ours. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. You know, prime ministers and presidents don't have as much power as we think they do. No, no they're given it's their the power people. by, sorry. It's, it's us ordinary people. <laughs> so I was going to say, it's pleasing us. But it's pleasing us too that motivate their choices. Yeah. Or pleasing us in interpreted to what they gain. Yes. Yeah. Mm. So leaders of the world are frightened. Mm. Their fear is of getting re-elected, and that fear drives them to do what they think we want. Yes. Yeah. Got it? It's so simple. And what we want has to change for our leaders to change. Mm -hmm. True. And it has to change from the inside. And the beauty of this is that we, what we're saying is here's an opportunity to live with peace inside, with goodness, with compassion. So it's a gift, mm. really. Wisdom Absolutely. is a gift. Absolutely is. <laughs> you see, so look at it as someone offering you a gift, not another thing to trap you and you know, all of that. Right? We're not trying to do that. It's gonna be priced really modestly, the same as Headspace and Calm, wherever you are in the world. Um, You know, we just have to do our little bit as we can uh, for ourselves. And as coaches, we have to also have our own journey of learning and embodying this wisdom in ourselves. Mm -hmm. We can't talk about it and not embody it in our own lives. So that's the challenge we all face individually. Me too, no question. Um, and it's a, it's a constant journey of learning and developing and growing as a human being. There's no kind of end point to that. Uh, Roland, are you with us now? Welcome. Hello, everyone. Sorry for the uh, background uh, <laughs> visual earlier on. I was uh, locked uh, with two meetings, but I, I kind of exit from, from the last one. So here I am at my real... Uh, <laughs> um, okay. It's it's really a, uh, an, an honor and a pleasure to be meeting everyone. Um, and and uh, actually, I, I'm very excited about this project. Um, and I, I have to thank you know my friends uh uh Mudit actually from from india for for connecting me um you know because um i i when i when i kind of read a bit of the brief and followed by the, uh, the 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 video i was just thinking gosh so what's going to happen next 
<laughs> and uh, the next thing I know is Mudit was, you know, uh, my, 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 my friend actually mentioned, you know, say, hey, why don't, why don't you, you know, sign up for, for a meetup? So here I am. And uh, while I'm listening to Mano, I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting more excited by the, the yep. program, actually. I'm actually at the phase of my life. I'm, I'm, I'm actually doing life coaching. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm at the phase of my life whereby I, I call it the last lap whereby, you know, I'm, I'm very interested in, in, in humans. I call them my community, my brothers and sisters. Uh, when you, when you have a heart wanting to help, to serve, to be there for them. Um, and you, when you come across a program like this, you say, oh my goodness, you know, you, you, you see wonders, you know, you, you yeah. see, you see opportunities to, to, to help. So I, I think this is, this is awesome, really. And I, and I can't wait to get it going because if, if, if you're going to attempt to, to, to be available to, to, to a community, say, for example, um, you know, however big and small and, or it depends on your, 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 your goals also, right? And if you are just alone, um, you're probably going to take a while to actually, you know, try and try and achieve or, or, or attain a certain outcome. But if you have a platform uh, 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 that, that, that you can leverage on, um, it may you 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 may not own it, but you're fine as long as you're affiliated and you are able to to achieve that 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 certain purpose, you know, like compassion. Wisdom is a very good word. It's something that I, I hold very close to my heart. You know, before I go to bed every night, I I, I say my prayer. Can I have more wisdom? Work with me while I'm asleep. <laughs> you know, the kind of thing. So that, so that, so that you know that you know you 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 wake up with something you know something like that. So I think this project is very exciting and uh, yes, let's 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 impact the world. You know, I think what I think it does this role and it allows us to make an impact at scale. So the mm-hmm. modern organization or a government, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter what they want to achieve. If they want to reduce healthcare costs by ten percent, we'll say mm-hmm. right. You know, it will help reduce addiction. Because all these problems begin in our thinking, whether it's stress, addiction, <laughs> obesity, you know, they're all linked to thinking. So we can make changes at scale. So that's the, what the opportunity is. The other thing I said right at the beginning, might have missed, is that everyone who is part of this project, I want them to own the project in the sense that you can contribute to the content. You can look at it and think, ah, because we're looking at the same mind that we all share. So it's not my mind, it's our mind. So if you find an insight or a way of communicating or a way of sharing something that we, that's not there, please feel free to comment and we can then change it to make it better, you know? So that's how it will grow and become the best thing it can be as we, as we travel. So Great. I want everyone who's involved in the project to have that feeling of ownership and that feeling, okay, how can we make this better? And that's how we'll all evolve. So I don't have any attachment to any of the ideas in there at all. Um, I don't think anybody's going to say what you've got in there is rubbish and we need to change it all anyway. (laughs) (laughs) I will listen to everyone. You know, Um, I think you learn so much more from your critics than you do from the people who say, well done, great, you know, that sort of thing. So. I've just thought of a, a quick question. Did you want us to um, finish ev- like all the modules in the app before we do the training in September? Okay, so for those who are new, we have got a few more slots of it left in the Australian program, which is those two weekends in September. I think the time zones will probably work best for you all for those for that. Uh, and I think we can accommodate those on the We already have 11 signed up so i think another one two if you're interested for yeah we should be able to make it so i'm going to send you all a copy of the book a login to the app it's still in development so there's some bugs so please report any bugs you may find and then on the program on the weekends we we meet we're basically going to share it's going to be a lot of discussion a lot of breakout rooms we're going to go through the program and hopefully at the end of it come to a place where we're in the, on the same page going forwards. Um, and in terms of timeline, the program will be launched probably in the next couple of months. The coaching program will follow uh, probably a month or two after that. 
because uh, it's in development, but also our India coaching program is in October and the American one is 16th, 17th October. So after those programs complete, we launch it all together. Software development is much harder than I realized. <laughs> it takes so much longer. <laughs> Every time you think you've done it, there's some bloody bug that turns up that you, know, you need to go and sort out. Yeah. Um, but I'm learning the hard way. But we have a big team working on it full time. But I'm really excited. And then we can also set up one-to-one -one calls if you want to explore some aspect you know, that we haven't discussed. Um, some opportunity or way we can work together on, and so on. I will write to all of you. Um, nice. So maybe one more round of comments and then we can close up. It's almost an hour. Jane, do you want to have any closing comments or um, questions? Well, just, just um, I guess, with what um, Sandeep said before um, about where all this wisdom comes from and where all the, you know, the ownership came and you pointed out about the pen. <laughs> um, I guess I understand where he's coming from because we don't want to infringe on anyone else's um, intellectual property or anything like uh, that. No, no, <laughs> clearly, no, it's not that at all. No, no, I'm not suggesting you might. I'm suggesting we might not want to. You know what I mean? Um, no. I wrote a, reason, a book called Freedom Beyond Conditioning East West, and there's a lot of... Um, Indian philosophy in there, for instance. I wouldn't want um, anyone to think that I have um, taken information from your program and used it for my purposes. So your approach to the information is, I gather from what you're saying, very much that it's we're free to share that information. That Absolutely. No, there's no ownership yes. on information yeah, yeah, yeah. and there's no crossing lines as far as quoting from different things because I'm about to do a, um, a thesis as I said on uh, leadership as well and I would love to mention this um, in I mean, the if you like mention that. it you know great if you don't want to mention it that's fine okay. too. yeah that's this good. is not about this, uh, this project is about changing the world and the future right. of humanity it's not about having, ownership having gone through the whole ethics thing with with universities it, you know this becomes a bit of an issue and I think Sand, and Sandeep's talking from the uh, organizational side of that as well can be very hairy so good to know thank you okay I'm excited. So if any, any last comments or questions um i want to sign up uh, straight away uh, what i can when i can i mean this is just uh, uh, almost like a dream come true like i said everything that i've been thinking about is just laid out here so i identify with this right away and almost completely uh, I just had a question regarding the, uh, you said 11th, 12th, 18th, 19th. So there will be four days, four half days. Yes. Right. Are there any other? Yes, because things? of the time zone, because I'm going to get up at 5.30 or 5 in the morning to get started. Right, 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 right. Oh, I see. So you'll be conducting it. Okay. Um, are there any other options, like any other batches? There might be. There, there is an India program, which is almost full 2nd, 3rd October. There's a US one, 16th, 17th October, but that's also almost full Sunday. But the time zones may not work. Do you know what I mean? I see, I see. But oh, then just uh, if not, 19, there might be future opportunities, but I don't know when that will be, you know? Yeah, yeah no, I'm not intending to wait for future opportunities. I'll, I'll have to take this one as it comes. <laughs> right, so when you say two and three October, are you saying that this is um, like full day programs for those two days? Yeah, so India is full day and right. uh, uh, America it's full day, but okay. Australia, because of the nine hour time gap, I yeah, just yeah, thought yeah. that's too much, so I need to. Okay, okay. You know. All right, so how do I, what do I have to do to sign up? Okay, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be in touch, I'll write Okay, okay, okay. all right. Okay, uh, Lisa is gone, oh, it's about to go. Lisa, do you want to have any comments before you, you run? Oh, you have to run, okay. Sorry, you're on mute, Thank you Lisa. very much. I want to know more. So I tie my question there. I need to run now. Okay, I'll let you go. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Roland, any last comments or questions? Um, I I will I will continue to read the materials that that you sent to me plus the ones that were what was uh, forwarded by Mudit uh, deeper <laughs> rather than just you know skipping it through. 
Um, I am certainly excited about this uh, program. Uh, do not leave me out. <laughs> No, no, no. Let's see. You're our first person in Singapore, so let's see what we can do together in yes. Singapore. Itself. You know, there's so much we can do. You know, yes, yes, in we South, can. In, yes, yeah, in Southeast Asia, because again, we, you're, you, you and Lisa are the first connections we've made in that part of the world, so we can do a lot together there. I, I, I was thinking of, uh, you know, the, 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 the in, in the ASEAN, uh, I mean, in terms of the ASEAN countries. <laughs> it's it's quite it's quite it's quite a number to 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 explore. So so there are opportunities to reach out to them as well. Yeah. So what we could do is, if you came on the September training program, I will actually we can, because the weekend works for me. Yeah. We can yeah. then hold a separate training program for the ASEAN countries, which you could then lead. Do you know what I mean? And we could get coaches from around that region. Sure. Uh, we can talk about that separately. We can talk about that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Elwin, do you have any last comments or questions before we leave? Well, it appears I have a little bit of homework today because <laughs> I've been super busy and, uh, and Natasha's going, have you looked at me at that? And I haven't, but I will because I find this to be truly amazing. And okay. I'm well, in. thank you very much. And uh, look for, I'll be in touch with all of you. Yeah. And Natasha, I wanted to thank you for hosting the event today and being my pleasure generous with your time. Girls, I yeah, I highly recommend read the book. It only took me a couple of days, but it was like mind blowing. <laughs> so yeah. No, thank you. Thank you so much for I have no idea what time it is over there in England right now, but thank you for yeah, teeing this up for us. Very okay. thank I'll you. be in touch with everybody and we can then also set up one to one conversations if required. Okay. Lovely. As we travel. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.